welcome to the Unleashed Greatness Podcast with your host, Jonathan Mitchell. The best in personal, emotional, spiritual, and business development. Hello, everyone. It is Friday Spiel Day on Unleashed Greatness, you guys. So grateful to have you guys on board. It is I, Jonathan Mitchell, Unleashed Greatness. You can find more from blogs or podcasts or coaching or whatever you want to find out from myself at UnleashG.com. Uh, today's the last day of the week. We had a bunch of really cool things happen this last week. Today is Spiel Day. I get to talk about a subject that near and dear to my heart. I love talking about and that is just relationships and being proactive or reactive inside of those relationships. Uh, today's podcast is sponsored by naturalmedicinemamas.com. For any help or products or advice around natural medicine or alternative medicine, they have tons of cool stuff and products for like flu or cold or anxiety for kids, women, and, and, and men and adults. Everything needs all there. It's pretty freaking awesome stuff. I use it daily. It's, it's really good stuff. So check it out. Again, Unleash G, we'll get going here with Spiele. Thank you so much. All right, it is Friday, people. So glad to have you on board. So this week we had a really good week. Um, I had with us on Monday for interview day, uh, Dr. Erin, the doctor of divinity. She came on board, talked to us about spirituality and changing your subconscious belief programming around money. Really, really good conversation with her. Tuesday, I had the NBA musings just talking about leadership and women and men at work. And then um, on Wednesday, we talked about the seven habits of highly effective people. Really, really good book. One of my favorites. I just love to talk about it. So go back there and listen to it if you want to. Yesterday, I had a four stories that would change the way you think. Very, very cool stories from markandangel.com. Check that out from yesterday. And then today is Spiel Day where I just get to talk about whatever I want to talk about, which today... I'm going to start off by talking about Spiel Day by saying a phrase and statement that I have found in coaching. I say this, I can't say how many times to clients, and so I'm going to say it today. How someone treats you shows more about them than it does about you. And how you respond to someone else shows more about you than it does about them. I'm going to say one more statement to go on to that. How someone treats you consistently is how you have trained them to treat you. And how you treat someone else is how consistently, I should say, is how they have trained you to treat them. I'm going to start with the first statement first. How someone treats you shows more about them than it does about you. Overall, like with Franklin Covey, I believe that we are proactive and we are human beings that have ultimately a choice over how we feel, think, behave, act, personality, whatever. We have a lot of control or say over what we do, think, say, or act. How someone treats me shows more about them than it does about me, right? And then the next statement, which is how someone treats me consistently is how I've trained them to treat me, which is a different conversation. We'll get to that in a second. I'm going to focus on the first statement first. How someone treats me shows more about them than it does about me. If someone comes into my life and they are disrespectful or mean or rude or happy and glad and and grateful and and loving, how someone treats me shows me so much more about them as an individual than it does about myself. And how I respond to someone, whether it's positive or negative or whatever, shows more about me than it does about them. So I want you to think about in your life how many times you've had someone come into your life and it was probably, let's go with the negative first, someone who was just absolutely horrible to you mean, took advantage of you, made fun of you, bully, whatever. Who is someone that has mistreated you in some way? First, the conversation is, it shows more about them and what's going on inside of them. And I say that because this will help shift how you feel about this person because you know more about them just based on how they're reacting and acting. Most people don't just act the way they act just to act it out. They're acting it and behaving that way for some sort of reason, either because they're modeling after someone else in their life because they had something traumatic just happen. They're just not in a good space or something is going on, right? I believe that most people are naturally nice and respectful and good. Not everyone is that way. I I, I would like to say that 90, 95% of people are nice and good and respectful um, people make mistakes and we're stupid and we, we do dumb things all the time. And sometimes we're just in a bad mood or something's happened and so things just happen and we may not treat people very nicely. Same thing with myself. How I respond to someone else shows more about me than it does about them. 
If someone comes towards me and they treat me crappy, I still have a choice to treat them good or to love them. If someone comes to me and treats me in a good way, I don't have to depend my confidence and my self-worth on their compliments or what they do to me or how they treat me. It, but it does show me about them and how what they who they are. Obviously, the people that we want to be around are the people that uplift us and build us and give us energy and to, and to make lives better, to make positive energy better. You have a choice over who spends time in your energy in your life. I don't care if it's family or not. If you have someone in your life that is draining and sucking the life out of you and draining energy from you, it's time to have several things happen, or I should say an option of one of these things happening. Number one is to cut them out of your lives. Number two is to have a conversation with them and just suggest and saying, hey, I'm trying this new thing. I'm listening to this podcast. I have a challenge to stay positive. And when you come into my life and you're negative, it makes it really hard for me to meet my goal. Will you help me with my goal and be positive with me? And then it, it lastly is just to restrict conversations and, and, and interactions with them. Sometimes that conversation can be awkward. Most of the time, especially with families, people don't talk about these things. They just kind of let things slide. And there's all these awkward silences when someone's like, uh, this person's being a little ridiculous. Instead of saying, can you, you know, be nice to people around you when you're around me, please? Because I don't appreciate when this happens. It's being able to set boundaries and say, this is how you're going to respond around me. Which leads me to my next, uh, my next uh, statement, which is, how people consistently treat me or behave around me is based on how I have trained them to act. And same with me, how I consistently behave around someone else is how they've trained me to act. So think about someone in your life. There are people in your life that you, for example, cannot, let's just say, swear around. I'll just use that as an example. My mom is one. I cannot and I would not and would ever not swear around my mom or I'd get slapped first and then, say, well, she wouldn't slap me, but the the thing that would be a bigger slap than actual physical slap would be the disappointment I would see on my mom's face if she ever heard me swear around here. So she has trained me to know that I cannot swear around my mom. And I choose to obey that because I love her and respect her. And I know I do not want to have the consequences of her being upset with me. <laughs> Same with other people. There's, there's some people around me that anytime I've had just recently, someone called me up and was talking about a, a mutual friend we had that, and they had a falling out. And this person on the phone with me is just talking all this bad stuff. And I just finally said, listen, I understand what you've gone through this person. I love you to death, but you have to understand I still care about this person you're talking about. And I'm not okay with you talking crap about them to me because it's not okay. And I just told him I wouldn't let them do the same to you if they're on the phone with me. You need to know that because I'm setting a boundary saying this is not okay. I care about both of you and I'm not okay with being the person that you're saying crap about. Go talk to someone else, but not me. It's not okay with me. And ever since then, anytime they call me up and they even bring that person up, no negativity comes up because they know I'm going to call them on it. So this is, this is all about two sides. The first side is ultimately no one has any control over how I behave. I could go with my mom and I could swear up a storm and whatever else. But what would happen is she would eventually choose not to be around me. And I don't want to have that happen. So to make sure I stay inside of her boundaries, I don't swear so that I can make sure my mom wants to be around me. So I'm behaving in a way that she's training me to behave if I want her in my life. Same thing with something that you do or some interaction you have. You have to be able to set those boundaries. Because ultimately, if you've set boundaries with someone and they keep coming into your life and they're abusive in any way, shape, or form, and you've set boundaries, it's not going to change until you do either have a conversation with them or just eliminate that interaction in your life or at least restrict it. I'm going to say the statements one more time. How someone behaves towards you, treats you, shows more about them than it does about you. And how you respond to someone else shows more about you than it does about them. Second statement, how someone consistently treats you is how you've trained them to treat you. And how you behave consistently towards someone else is how you've trained them or how you've, yeah, how, how they've trained you to treat. Yeah. They've trained you to treat them. That's right. <laughs> the other side of it is, is that just know if someone is taking advantage of you, like let's just say someone comes into your life and just says, hey, I need some more money or I need more of this, I need more of that. It's because you've let them and trained them to be okay with doing that to you over and over and over again. I have someone very close to me that complains about people taking advantage of him all the time. And yet he's the one who allows it to happen. He's the one that doesn't set boundaries in the first place. And there, therefore, people know they can go to him 
ask him for money, ask him for help, ask him for contacts. Then it happens. They get the money. They take advantage of him. And then later on, he's he's feeling anger around the situation and just this overall sense of like, I don't like working with this person, but yet doesn't change his behavior to change how they're treating him. It just blows my mind. But the whole point of this is, is about setting boundaries. If there's an interaction in your life, I don't care if it's at work with your family, with your friends, with your love partner, with whoever it is. If someone's treating you in a way that you don't like, it's because you have allowed it to happen over and over and over. And it's time for you to set boundaries and to stop it. Secondly, is if there's someone in your life that treats you well, let's go on the opposite side. If someone treats you good, it's because they know they can have that positive interaction with you and they can be in that space with you. Be willing to have the people that are closest to you, whether it's at work or at home or whatever, look at how they treat you and say, am I liking how they treat me? Does this bring more energy into my life? Even if someone has to have a hard conversation with you and it's blunt and it's uncomfortable about something maybe you've done wrong, it doesn't mean that it's a bad one to have. I'm not saying all of our interactions should be positive and always happy and whatever else because we make mistakes and we're messy. The point is, is being able to have a conversation in a loving, kind, patient way and make that your mantra. My challenge to you is, is being aware of how people treat you consistently. Ask the question, have I trained them to treat me this way? Have I not set my boundaries? Number two is looking at yourself and seeing if you treat someone else not very well. Have they trained you to be that way? Are you choosing and being proactive and saying, maybe I'm going to change the way I behave here? And lastly is going a step behind the behaviors is asking the question, what thoughts do you think about other people when you come into their presence? I want you to ask the question and be understanding and realize the questions you have before you interact with anybody. What thoughts do you have about that person? Are you judging them? Are you looking at their clothing? how they smell, how they act, how they speak. Are you looking at them? Is there some sort of judgmental thought? If there is, trust me, there's a judgmental energy and they are feeling it and it will affect your interaction. Same thing with love. Do you look at people you interact with and you share love and just shower them with love and gratitude? There's an interesting study done with these people. I'm going to kind of go off on a, on a tangent for real fast. Interesting study done about these um, waiters at a restaurant. They had half the waiters as like a team of 30 waiters, high-end restaurant, and they just kept track of all the sales they did from day to day. The first group of waiters, they had them do just the regular thing they would do. Good customer service was a restaurant that had amazing customer service, was rated high for it. Just do what they usually did. They're, they're just the usual playing group. The second group, um, all they did differently was do the exact same thing they do before, except for... Before they interacted with the customers, they would think in their minds, I'm grateful for you and I love you. Again, not in a weird, creepy way, love, not that kind of stuff, but a genuine, healthy, soul-to-soul, person-to-person, I love you, you're my brother in this life, you're my sister in this life, I love you and I'm grateful for you being here to eat food and to help me make my livelihood. After the night was done, one night of doing this, the people that were shooting love and gratitude in thought to the customers versus the people who weren't, made 25 to 30% more in tips just from that alone. They didn't do anything else. And the study just shows about how your thoughts obviously affect your energy, which affects how you come across to someone. It's the same thing in sales. If someone comes up to you and they're nervous, or even if they're like, I'm sure everyone's had the interactions with like the used car salesman where they're just snaky. They're just shady and you're not sure what's going on they're trying to take advantage of you like that energy is just because they're concerned mostly any interaction and positive interaction and compliments they have is for the whole f purpose of selling you something as opposed to just truly loving you and trying to find something best for you my challenge is for you to take your thoughts and notice them and say how do I think about people that irritate me bug me that talk bad about me that kind of stuff and how Am I willing to choose to love them and praise them? I trust me, if you're willing to do this, I had a time once on my mission where I had a guy on my mission with, with the Christian mission. We, we worked with partners, um, a partner in crime, so to speak, and we were with him um, for 24-7 for four months. And this guy I worked with, I was with for about four months, and he and I for the first three or four weeks could not stand each other. And my mom actually wrote me a letter once, and I told her about this in a letter before. She wrote me a letter. This was before emails, by the way. It's how a little, a little while ago this was. She wrote me a letter and just said, 
you need to love your, you know, your guy with you. He's your guy. He's your partner. He is your, um, the guy you're depending on. I don't care how bad he is. You're, you're in a Christian mission. You're going to be Christian, then be a Christian. And I was like, okay, mom. So from that point forward, I started to just think in my head, I love you and I'm grateful for you. Even though he bugged the living bejeebies out of me, he bugged me so much. I can't even tell you, but I chose to shoot love and gratitude to him. That's all I did. And so I think in my mind, I love you. I'm grateful for you. Love you. I'm grateful for you. Love you. I'm grateful for you. Even when he did stupid things and said annoying things and was just dumb in my, in what I thought was dumb. And then out loud, I'd start doing the same thing. So anytime we're with other people and we did like a service project and built a fence, I'd just say, you know how awesome this guy is. I'm just so grateful for him. I'd say it out loud and I, and I told it to him. I spoke it. I thought it. And within a week, maybe two, he totally changed how he was behaving and acting towards me because he no longer felt threatened. And he felt like I was a friend that cared about him. And we eventually became he, one of the closest friends I've, I have had. And we've talked many times. He's, he's a stud of a guy. And I didn't appreciate who he was because I was too involved in my own judgmental and critical thoughts of my own of him instead of just loving him. The thought is God is inside of us. God is inside of everyone else. How are we treating the God inside of us and then the God inside of other people? If God was to approach us and he happened to wear a skin of a homeless person or of a rich, wealthy man or of a politician that's doing stupid things, how do we treat that person? How do we think about them? God is inside of them. Divine is inside of them. And so we have the ability to choose if we're willing to let the divine show up in our lives and to love them regardless of how and what they do. My challenge to you is to think that you love and are grateful for people that bug you. That you train them and set boundaries to people who will not respond to you and not respect your boundaries and to train them to treat you in a way that you are okay with. And same thing with others. Make sure you're aware about how you treat others as well. This is Unleash Greatness. Thank you so much for listening in. Go to UnleashG.com for more. Thank you, and we'll talk later.